Alright, this about to be an iconic video on the channel. Too many times, y'all be hitting me up, Agent. I'm shooting all whites. Why am I breaking? Why is it so, Agent? Why am I not shooting green lights? The amount of times I get that question, the funny thing is, is I answer it all the time. And for some people, it clicks and it's simple stuff. Now, this video, I'm going into all kinds of details. So if after this video, you can't learn to shoot, it's literally just user timing. Because the way 2K works, there's a few things you have to understand before you can start shooting consistently, unfortunately. It would have been nice if you could just hold the square button and if it's all white, it's a pretty good chance. But in my experience, I could shoot an early release and have a better chance than a good release. It just feels that way. So if you know someone's struggling with this epidemic, cause this that's really what it is. It's a virus. It's a virus and it's, it's been causing too many scrubs on the park to shoot up bricks. I need to solve this issue, man. I'm tired of playing with people on the program that's shooting up bricks on my team. Like, yo, that's... This is wide open, my guy. If you can't hit that shot, we don't stand a chance. If you guys are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Let's get into it. For basics, there's many different types of releases. You could shoot very early, slightly early, good, perfect, good, slightly late, or very late. That combined with your shooting attribute is gonna determine a percentage. NBA 2K Lab put out a tweet saying, shots with a slightly early release 47% made, 0% green. Shots at the edge, which are counted as good releases, 65% made, 28% green. So often when you find yourself making horrible releases and missing good ones, it's because of these percentages here. When Mike Wang is moving around the sliders, it's this kind of stuff he's touching. All right, agent, we know that, but you can explain how some of these players are so deadly and consistent from three? Yeah, man, that's what I'm here to do, y'all. I got y'all. Because at the end of the day, you can live and die with the percentage. That's what a lot of casual players do. But the players that are deadly from three, what they realize is I don't wanna shoot 60% from three, I wanna shoot 100%. And the only way to shoot 100% is to get green lights every single time. The stats I quoted earlier from NBA 2K Lab were assuming an 80 open shot three. And there was another massive variable that there's no possible way they can take into account. Just the, the amount of testing it would take, you would have to go to Mike Wang himself to get the answer. And that's a jump shot. Now, if y'all pay attention to anything in this video, it's gonna be what comes up next. So let's get into it. In NBA 2K18, you will live and die with the jump shot you choose. The jump shot you choose will impact your green light window, how difficult it is to hit a green. There's early releases, there's late releases, there's some releases that are awesome for standing shots but awful for moving shots and vice versa. Some releases have horrible limitless range potential, some are outstanding. On some releases you lean way too much and on other ones you can get standing pretty easily. There's a ton of factors and with each jump shot, no, nothing is gonna be perfect. So the reason I dropped these jump shot videos is because you really have to sit here for hours on hours testing out a bunch of different stuff to find one that fits you and your play style. I'm feeling generous today, man. For those watching the video, do what you have to do. Prepare your screenshot, save the video, drop a like, subscribe, well, hey, whatever it takes. Cause I'm dropping right now my A1 My Park jumper. Now for those who are new to the channel, let me just explain to you the significance of what I just said. I don't just name anything an A1 jumper. For me, all the stuff I just finished mentioning has to be complete with a check on the checklist for it to qualify as an A1 jumper. Let me take these glasses off to just really illustrate. Last year in 2K17, only three jumpers ever qualified for A1 status. This release right here is the first one that I have found on the park. And there's a, a second one that's looming. I have some more tests to do with that one that qualifies as A1. I take this as seriously. I send it to a board of directors. They have to take a vote on this stuff. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny though? <laughs> now this right here is a My Park jumper. Do not try it. You can try it on the Pro-Am, especially if you're running on Wi-Fi and it might work, but it's specifically if you're dealing with higher latency situations, AKA My Park. For the sake of this video, we need to use a jump shot to try all these tests and explain really what creates an amazing jump shot. And once you find an amazing jump shot, it doesn't stop there. Cause there's many people that watched my last jump shot video, like Agent, why am I shooting up bricks? is because you didn't do the second part. And we'll get to that second part, but the first part is this. I'm gonna give my diagnosis of this release here. The biggest flaw point blank period with this release is it's slow. But I've told you guys many times, do not shy away from slow releases. Often, they are the deadliest. On catch and shoots, I've never found a better release. Off the dribble on moving shots, it's outstanding. The limitless range potential is uncanny. It has a massive green light window. Like the biggest I've seen on any jump shot, regardless of all the other factors. And even on leaning shots where your guy gets caught off guard and goes up for that slow release, 
it still shoots really good percentages. So again, literally the only flaw is the speed of the jump shot. If you're 6'4 and under, you can try putting it on very quick, seeing if that eliminates the problem. But the biggest thing about this jump shot, and when you're creating your jump shot, you're gonna wanna pay attention for, is a Q. Ah, Q. It's one of my key words. That along with latency is one of the two most abused words in Agent Zero history. When I'm talking about a Q, I'm talking about a tell, a trigger, a specific point in time during the jump shot in which you're meant to release the square button. It makes life easier. Um, now let me just put it out point blank period. You heard me say it before, but listen carefully. Anybody who shoots looking at their shot meter will become an average shooter. Somebody please turn that into a nursery rhyme. I've said it many a times, there's too large of a margin of error when you're looking at your shot meter. You can't really tell when you're meant to release the ball. And depending on the latency between games is gonna throw your shot meter off too. The only time you ever use a shot meter is on free throws, that's it. You can have it there for reference, that's what I do in case I get a green, I wanna know about it. But I'll never focus on it when I'm going up for my shot. Now there's two different types of cues. There's cues on a one motion shooter and two motion shooters. For the sake of this video, we're focusing on one motion shots because the A1 jump shot is a one motion shot, clearly. I mean, the difference between the two is pretty self-explanatory. I don't know that you need me to go into detail between those, but here is an example of a one motion shot and here is an example of a two motion shot. A one motion shot cue is super simple. It's as easy as it gets. You just release the ball as it reaches the fingertips of the shooter in motion as it feels like it should be released. It's that simple. On two motion shots, it's a little bit more complicated. Sometimes I'll look if the feet clap together or I'm looking for a specific type of motion or when his head of the player hits the zenith, when the ball reaches the player's nose. I'm looking for specific areas on two motion shots, but I'm on one motion shot. You can literally just focus on the fingertips and you'll green every single time. So the second my release reaches this point, I let it go. This point, I let it go. This point, I let it go. So the reason you guys hear me complain about latency is when I'm making these jump shots, I look at specific cues and I account for a specific amount of latency. If for whatever reason it's acting up that day on the park, I have to switch jump shots because my cue is thrown off. So it's not super complicated. The second you see the ball hit his fingertips, you let go. And as I explained earlier, it all lies in the jump shot because you there's a lot of one motion shots you can use on 2K, but they won't green like this one. They won't hit off the fade like this one. They won't hit limitless like this. They won't be nearly as consistent consistent as this jump shot here. So that's why I'm saying jump shot is half the work, the second half is your timing. Man, y'all low key making me proud, man. I feel like a sensei and my students don't graduate. On my last jump shot video I dropped, yo, the amount of tweets, comments, people sent me screenshots like agent, I went out there, dropped 60, dropped 80 with your jump shot, and I'm like, yo! So literally, that's what I'm trying to do again here this video because it makes me feel good about myself. Man, I hope y'all been keeping up so far because I'm about to talk about why the dreaded latency is one of my key words. When we're talking about latency, we're talking about from the time you click the square button to the time you see the action on screen. So when that delay is extended because the 2K servers are bugging that day, I have to release all my shots earlier. That also means for my Pro-Am jump shot, when it's bugging on the Pro-Am, there's no longer a cue for my jump shot. And then I go from the deadliest shooter in the game to average Joe Schmo who's kind of living off percentages. Luckily though, there are some jump shots that can fight through latency and I call those lag proof jump shots. Since I got my PS4 Pro, I haven't felt the need to dive into that just yet. But this jump shot right here, of all the amount of jump shots I've tested so far is the most lag proof jump shot and it has such a massive green light window. You can literally use this both on Pro-Am and Park. I haven't had a jump shot do that in a very, very long time. Part of the reason why is because it's very slow. Telling y'all about them slow jump shots, man. So when I'm crafting this jump shot, what I'm trying to do is get to 92%. Because by the time I hit my Q and I release the square button, if I'm at 92%, the latency carries it the other 8%. I I hit 100 green light. That's my goal. I need the latency to be the buffer that hits me to the green. Because in every game, even when you're playing my career offline, there's gonna be latency, right? Because there's always gonna be that button delay from controller to console to server. And so what initially began as an obstacle for me, I began to start to use strategically. So in situations like the Pro-Am or the Park, when you're dealing with less latency and there's minimal button delay, and you can tell the difference, when your player is feeling sluggish, that's definitely more latency. But when you're feeling more responsive, you'll have those days, literally it becomes infinitely easier to make a jump shot. So just know that if you are dealing with that, this jump shot is, is still prime. And unlike my Pro-Am jump shot, which goes from a phenomenal 
to butt cheeks because it will go to butt cheeks. You will lose. You can still shoot like 60%, but let's be honest. Is that nice? Who's trying to shoot 60%? Which one of y'all? I'm trying to shoot 100%. I don't care who's in my face, right? I don't care if I'm open or there's five guys guarding me. Hey, my, what's my PSN again? Kobe drop 81. In any and all times on the basketball court, I'm trying to be like Kobe. There is not a shot I won't take. I promise you, if you let me take all the shots in the game, I will do it. That's just the kind of player I am, man. It's also important to note that when you're creating your jump shot in the jump shot creator, it looks one way. Then when you switch it up and you're equipping your animations, the release looks very different. And then when you hop on the my court, the release looks completely different. I don't know what it is with the jump shot creator, but you, so I've created jump shots that look golden in the creator. And then when I hop into a game with them, they look completely different and they're absolute garbage. So if you're creating a jump shot, watch out for that. You're gonna wanna do a lot of testing where you create your jump shot, you go to equip animation, it's gonna look different, but does it still look aye? Right? Now, when it comes to hot zones, they don't mean nearly as much much as they did last year. Now, shout out to my guys at NBA 2K Lab. They have the modded controller. They're running tests all the time. They got, listen, I'm gonna link their website in the description down below. Click it. Do yourself a favor, it's the place to be. They put out a tweet saying, green window was exactly the same inside a hot zone compared to neutral. Appears hot zones do not have an impact on green likelihood at all. That on top of the fact that it's way more difficult this year to get hot zones. It is not a good juice of your time. You're much better off getting your badges. Now it goes without saying, get all of your badges, right? Because the shooting badges especially is gonna make an impact when you're shooting the basketball. I've been working on this video throughout the day. It's literally nighttime now. So there's a bunch of other smaller stuff. Like I can always try and get into what I'm thinking about when I create a jump shot, but I'm trying my hardest to explain this the best I can, but all of that stuff is just pseudo. It's literally like there's no real facts behind it. I just try stuff that's worked before, stuff that didn't, try new stuff, and I mesh together and I create an A1 jump. And there's a lot of times I fail, and that's why I do these tests because jump shots are gonna be garbage sometimes. So, I mean, just to name off some tips when it comes to shooting, yeah, just to finish this video off. Never do moving shots if you can do a standing shot. If you're dead ass trying to learn how to shoot through cues, Try playing on a 2K low camera. It gives you like an eye level. It makes life a little bit easier on offense, but defensively, at least for me as a pure sharp, it's a disaster, so I stick with 2K. And the last thing, and the reason I don't go into detail much is because I don't like to make jump shots a super complicated topic. And it might seem like that for a new person. You're like, how do we do this? And then you watch a video and a guy's telling you all these stats and numbers. Like, why do I need to know all this just to shoot the basketball? The thing is, you don't. Like, when I'm shooting the ball, I don't think about any of this stuff. I've done it so much now, it just, I just go, go, go. So literally, it'll take a while to get used to. And once you get used to it, you'll be shooting like a green light machine in no time. Or a blue light, or aqua, whatever color you chose for your jump shot creator. What I'm trying to say is don't overthink the situation. Last thing you want to do is overanalyze it. Just let let it flow. You'll every time I test a new jump shot, I'm I'm taking losses with my team and it's my fault and their record is getting messed up because I'm shooting up bricks trying to learn the cue. So with any new jump shot, you gotta learn the cue. You're not gonna just, just click square, it's gonna be green every time. But I'm telling you, there's jump shots like the one I dropped today where it makes life so much easier. And because it's slow, it gives you a lot more time. It's, it's easier to time a slow jump shot than a very fast one, right? So anyway, I'm gonna leave it on that. If you guys are new to the channel, again, subscribe, drop a like. Let's try and hit 10,000 likes on the video. Uh, I'm trying to get this video up by tonight, so I'll catch you guys later. I got a lot of editing to do. I'm out, peace.